Welcome back everyone. On the last episode, we brought in the TCMC2 library so that we had the PLC open function blocks. We also linked our access reference here to the real drive in the NC section. So that lets us get status from the drive into our PLC runtime. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is uh, episode 8 actually, we're going to look at MC power, MC reset, and MC jog. So uh, MC jog is about the simplest thing you can do with one of these servos, so we're going to start with that, but in order to do it, we need to be able to reset the drive and get it powered up. So I'm going to do that first, and the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all this code that we built earlier. I'm going to keep some of these outputs and stuff in here, but it's been bu bugging me that there's so much dirty code in there. So we're going to move on, and I'm going to start defining the function blocks that we're going to use. Okay, so as mentioned, we're going to put in these function blocks here. We have MC power and it looks like this and we have MC reset and we have MC ja, MC jog oh wait hold on MC jogging MC J control space We'll bring up MC jog. There we go. I couldn't remember the name of that. Control space is a good helper. So we have all these now. We can uh, hop online. It'll do a compile here with an online change. And we'll take a look at what we got to work with. Okay. I'm going to give us a little bit of room to work here. MC power. We've got a reference to the axis here. That's pretty standard for all of these function blocks. Enable. Enable positive, enable negative. If you remember back on axis here, we had to set this before we did a move. Controller, feed forward, feed backwards. So those are, if I come back here, these three here. So no big deal. You just do them from the PLC now because we've linked this axis, or here shortly we will. Uh, so override, this is a really nice way to, to temporarily override the speed of an axis. Uh, if you wanted to do some testing or something like that. So 5% would be 5% of the normal move rates. Uh, you got some buffer mode, not worried about that. Status, busy, active, error, error ID, stuff like that. MC reset has similar stuff. Reset, or the uh, reference to the axis, done, busy, errors, uh, ADS is busy, states, stuff like that. And jogging, we have jog forward, jog backwards. With an S, not sure why that's plural and the other isn't, but jog mode here, and then we've got some position, velocity, acceleration, and that's of the actual jog. So this is your first motion block that we've actually put in here. So uh, if you're wondering, these look a little different. You know, we're looking at the uh, the instance of this function block, and when we saw the website earlier, it was a CFC continuous function block. So it's the same code behind it. It's just we're looking at it a different way. Uh, so all these different options in here, we'll move a, use a few of these, and some of these may be internal things that we really shouldn't be digging into. So yeah, so it, these are out. Uh, that's an in out. These are inputs here. These are outputs, and then all this is like internal stuff that really we shouldn't worry about. We we can see it because of the the way the scoping works, but don't sweat any of this stuff. It's all how it works internally. So that's about it. Let's set up a power and a reset and uh, go from there. Alright, so I've put us into configuration mode here and what we need is a state machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a state here. I state dent. If you're not familiar with the state machines, go back and watch the first set of videos first. It'll help you out a lot. I've got just a template here. So it's gonna check state and if we're in zero it's gonna wait, then it's gonna we're eventually gonna to jump to ten and so on. So I've just scaffolded this out a little bit. Uh, so the first thing we need to do, let's just I state equals ten. Here we need to try to reset this drive. So uh, oh one thing I forgot, we need to call all these function blocks or else they're not gonna be able to run. So one way to do this is to do it in the state machine per state, or you can just run them like this. So Reset and let's see here. Let's go uh, axis equals axis B. MC reset and then this will be MC jogging. Whoops. 
Okay, looks good. So the very first thing, no matter what, we're going to pop into state 10 and we're going to try to reset this drive. All right, so we need to put in this function block here, mc reset axis equals axis b. And we have to call that every time because it's an in out variable, so it likes to have it on every call. And then we will do our only input to this function block is execute. And we'll set that to true. And we can just wait here actually with it set to true. And we can say if mc reset, oops, reset dot done, then i state equals 20. And what we can do here, I like to do typically else if mc reset dot error, then i state equals 999. So we know that we get an error, and we'll come down here and just add in 999 and, you know, handle error to do. We'll never probably do that, but in, in regular practice, you would for sure. So. If this axis resets properly, it's going to jump to state 20, and we're going to wait on the drive to reset. All right, so what does a successful reset look like? In this case, if mc power.status, then i state equals 30. So mc power.status will be if the power powered up the drive and, and got a true here. So um, with that said, we never told the drive to power up, so let's go do that now. And to do that, we'll just set enable equals true and enable positive equals true and enable negative equals true. So once we do that, it should just always keep this drive enabled and then of course we'll come through and reset it and hopefully its status will come true and we'll come here to state 30. So I've labeled state 30 wait for a drive command. Uh, in this case we're gonna say MC jogging I believe is what we called this. Yeah, MC jogging. And here we need to give it the access reference. Access B. And then we have some options here. I'm not gonna get too crazy because they will default to whatever NC has if you leave them blank. Uh, so I'm going to say jog forward equals prox. And so that jog forward is going to be equal to the digital input of the prox, and we're just going to jog along happily anytime that, that prox is set true. So let's see if that actually works. I'm going to save it all, actually do a save all, activate, and let's see if it comes up and resets. It should just start automatically resetting as soon as I hit run. and run the PLC, and we're in state 30, so that looks good. Let's check it on the hardware. All right, she's up and running. I'm gonna activate the prox. All right, she works. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll dig a little deeper.